morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline 16th of December 2023. This week's headlines. In Iran, Maza Amini's family were stopped at the airport on their way to collect an award. Chants of From the River to the Sea once again boomed through central London. Sharia for UK, Allah Akbar, shouted Muslim immigrants. Richard Dawkins asks, why is Islam so hostile towards joyful activities like singing and dancing? The UK government had an opportunity to outline a series of policies to tackle the growing levels of Islamophobia across society, says an MP. An Israeli soldier blows up an entire building in Gaza as a birthday gift to his two-year-old daughter. Penn University president quits in an anti-Semitic row. France's Emmanuel Macron is buffeted from all sides in a row over secularism. There is a, another row at a French school over a nude painting and the teachers walk out. Six French teenagers are on trial over a teacher's murder. The UCKG church. A pastor tells the boy evil spirits hide in him. A teacher is jailed indefinitely for refusing to call a boy a girl. Will the new Australian Parliament impose prayer rituals? So here is the news in detail. The family of Marza Amini have been banned from flying to France to collect a top human rights prize in her offer. Ms. Amini's parents and brother were stopped from boarding their flight and had their passports confiscated. They were travelling to Strasbourg to be presented with the EU's Sakharov Prize, which has been awarded posthumously to Ms. Amini. She was the girl who was killed in police custody for not wearing her hijab properly. Their lawyer said they were banned from leaving despite having valid visas. Chants of From the River to the Sea rang through central London. See this video. And Sharia for the UK shouted Muslim immigrants. See this video. Richard Dawkins wonders why Islam is so hostile towards joyful activities. See another video. Why is Islam so hostile to joyful activities like singing and dancing? I don't know. It's like, to me, it's so shocking that a beautiful voice. You know, I asked the same question to former president of Iran. I said that 
Why? You just give me an explanation that why singing is forbidden for women. Have you ever heard of a woman singing? And he said that, yeah, I heard women citing the Quran. I said, no, but wait a minute, that's different. MP Naz Shah says, Today, the government had an opportunity to outline a series of policies to tackle the growing levels of Islamophobia across society. Instead, it decided to gaslight Muslim communities. See this video. How we tackle Islamophobia, pick and choose who we want to invite. Number 10, put tea and samosas, not see, and we will not accept your definition as you Muslims decide define it because that's your experience of discrimination no we don't accept it because we're the government and when it comes to you muslims we will apply not the liberal democratic principles we apply to the rest of the country we will apply a totalitarian approach that government responds to tackle islamophobia well done what was i expecting mr deputy speaker a government that would miss another opportunity to actually put some policy in place to tackle Islamophobia. Dare I imagine that that's what I should expect? No, just a long list of opportunities missed by this government, missed by the Prime Minister who stands with the British Muslim communities. Not, not unless they fit their criteria. The truth is, Mr. Deputy Speaker, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it swims like a duck, it's a duck. If it feels like gaslighting, if it sounds like gaslighting, as a Muslim, as a representative of Bradford, large Muslim constituencies, let me tell this government that is gaslighting. That is what we've had from the government benches today. And what a shame. What a shame that we didn't uphold the British values here, the British values of equality, the British values of fairness, the British values of justice, that we will treat people equally. But no, you Muslims, let's treat you differently. We're not going to give you a definition. We don't want you to have a say of what, what it feels like to have Islamophobia. We'll just call it anti-Muslim hatred. That's the worst in his, his, his comments that actually the Prime Minister, not just gaslighting, but there is, he has created a hierarchy of racism. He doesn't treat Islamophobia as equal. And I and it disheartens me. I just wait for the next general election and let people vote with their feet and treat the party which stands for equality, justice and fairness because it's certain the Tories. This bombing is a gift to my daughter, Princess Ella, who is two years old, said an Israeli soldier. See this video. A U.S. university president has quit after her comments about anti-Semitism on campus during a congressional hearing triggered a major backlash. Elizabeth McGill, president of the University of Pennsylvania, refused to say whether students who called for the genocide of Jews should be punished. The university said she voluntarily tendered her resignation but will stay in post until a replacement is found. Ms. McGill has previously apologised for her testimony. 
She made the controversial comments while appearing in front of a House of Representatives committee on the 5th of December alongside the presidents of Harvard and MIT. They were asked by Republican New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate your university's code of conduct regarding bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Ms. McGill and her MIT and Harvard counterparts said repeatedly it would depend on the context and they have been criticised for not flatly condemning any calls for the genocide of Jews. See this video. Ms. McGill at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. I am asking specifically calling for the genocide of Jews. Does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to use, Ms. Bill. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric. When and it anti-Semitic rhetoric. Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct and we do take action. So the answer is yes that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on what I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. It's evil, plain and simple. Emmanuel Macron has been accused of betraying the French Republic after he took part in a Jewish ceremony inside his official residence, the Elysee Palace. The president had invited France's chief rabbi, Chaim Kosia, to light the first of eight candles on a Hanukkah, or candelabra, marking the start of the Jewish Festival of Lights. The occasion was the award to President Macron of a prize for his efforts against anti-Semitism. But when the video of the ceremony appeared shortly afterwards on social media, there was furore. For French opinion formers of all stripes, the president had committed an enormous faux pas by allowing religion into the secular hallows of the presidency. As far as I know, this is the first time this has ever happened. It is a breach of secularism, said David Lisnard, a prominent right-wing opposition figure who is also mayor of Cannes. The Elysee is not a place of religion. You cannot compromise with secularism, said the socialist president of the Occitania region, Carol Delga. Will Macron now do the same for the other religions? Some yes, some no. It's a dangerous spiral, said Alexis Corbière of the far left France Unbowed. Even some French Jews were perplexed. This is something that shouldn't be allowed to happen again, said Jonathan Arfi, 
who heads the representative council of French Jewish institutions. French Jews have always considered secularism as a law of protection and of freedom. Anything that weakens secularism weakens Jews, he said. The idea of secularism was put into a French law in 1905, after years of struggle between the state and the Roman Catholic Church. It enshrined, it enshrined freedom of belief, but ended state involvement in the church and removed all signs of religion from public places. Six teenagers have gone on trial in Paris for their alleged roles in the murder of a teacher, Samuel Paty. The children are accused of slander and pointing out Monsieur Paty to his killer, a Chechen refugee, at the school. They were aged between 13 and 15 at the time of the killing in 2020, when the trial was happening behind closed doors. Local media report that the suspects, who face up to 2.5 years in prison, hid their identities as they arrived at the juvenile court on Monday. Monsieur Petit was stabbed and beheaded on October the 16th, 2020, after reportedly showing students cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad during a class on freedom of expression. The youngest suspect was 13 years old at the time of the killing. She is alleged to have untruthfully told her father that she had been disciplined for having confronted Monsieur Paty over an alleged request for Muslim students to leave the class. She had, in fact, been absent from the class in question. Nonetheless, her father posted videos on social media calling for Monsieur Paty to be fired. Prosecutors believe these videos prompted Shechen Abdullah Anzorov to travel around 50 miles from Normandy to conflans saint honorine near Paris to commit the murder. Anzorov, 18 years old at the time, was shot dead by police at the scene. A UK branch of a Christian church has been secretly filmed trying to cast out evil spirits from a 16-year-old. A Universal Church of the Kingdom of God pastor was seen reciting what looked like so-called strong prayers to rid the boy of a demon. BBC Panorama was also told by a gay ex-member he was given strong prayers at 13 to try to make him straight. The UCKG says under-18s are not allowed into strong prayer services and it does not perform conversion therapy. The UCKG has branches around the world, including 35 in the UK, where it is registered as a charity. It says it has more than 10,000 members across the country and describes itself as a Christian Pentecostal church. Prayers to cast out evil spirits are not unusual in the Christian world. Some churches call them deliverance or exorcisms, although the latter is not a term the UCKG uses. Dr. Joe Aldred, a Pentecostal bishop who works to bring together different Christian traditions, says, Christians believe, I believe, there are forces for good and evil in the world. Strong prayers in the UCKG usually involve a pastor laying hands on a member of the congregation and demanding an evil spirit leaves their body. The church says it conducts the prayers at so-called spiritual cleansing services each week to remove the root cause of the problems. The UCKG originally came under scrutiny following the murder of eight-year-old Victoria Klimby, who was murdered by her great-aunt and the woman's boyfriend. Enoch Burke, who taught history in German, refused to refer to a transitioning transgender student as they rather than he in May last year. It sparked a chain of events 
that has led to him being jailed for repeatedly showing up at Wilson's Hospital School in County West Meath, Ireland, after being sacked and entering the staff room saying he was there to do his job. Now he remains in Dublin's Mountjoy prison with no prospect of release because he refuses to comply with a court order to stay away from the school premises. Meanwhile, Burke's loyal family continue to protest at the school, maintaining that he's being persecuted for his Christian beliefs, while supporters insist the whole country is behind him. Others less sympathetic to the cause view his stubborn refusal and his family's protests as attention-seeking, with one newspaper columnist pointing out that the Burks like to get their own way. The row broke out more than a year ago when, during a meeting with the head teacher and his deputy, Burke said that his evangelical Christian beliefs meant he opposed he opposed transgenderism. Following this, Burke publicly criticised the head teacher's demand that staff use students' chosen pronouns, following a service at the Church of Ireland School to celebrate its 260th anniversary. Burke was accused of breaching the confidence of the transitional stu of the transitioning student, and as a result, he was suspended with pay and later fired for gross misconduct in August last year. However, Burke continued showing up at the school, prompting his former employer to obtain a court order to get him to stay away. In September last year, Burke was jailed for a hundred days for ignoring the court order. During an appeal, the teacher argued that he was being imprisoned because of his Christian beliefs. After being released, Burke was imprisoned for the second time in September this year for refusing to stay away from the school again, and he has been told he will remain in prison indefinitely until he agrees to comply with the court order. Australia has a new parliament. Will it continue to start meetings with a Christian prayer? See this video. Well, as a Member of Parliament, I've always been open about the fact that I am an atheist. Indeed, I've written before about the fact that, in my personal view, I don't believe that it's appropriate for each day's parliamentary sitting to begin with a prayer, and I don't anticipate that in them myself. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy blessing upon this Parliament. Direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement of thy glory and the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Shortly on this channel, you can watch Tercia and I chat with guest Tyler Legar, a blind single father of three who has become an atheist. And don't forget to watch Views on the News, the show where our opinionated panel give their views on the items I've just reported on. This has been Global Atheist News. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.